The Herd Lie News. So I got to talk about the Cowboys. Um, you know, when you have one of these big brands, you know, Ohio State football, Cowboys, Lakers, Yankees, people often say, you guys talk about them even when they're not good. You're right. There's a reason. The Cowboys are usually the highest rated telecast on every single network. NFL Network, Fox, they're on Monday Night Football. You're right, we do. The downside to being the big brand is, is when you're struggling, we also talk about you more than we would talk about the Jaguars struggling or the Detroit Lions struggling or the Bengals struggling. So when the Lakers fall apart and have like a seven, eight year stretch where they're a mess, we bang on them a lot, even though they're not, you know, a top team. And Dallas had a really poor offseason. Not good. The Lakers have addressed their frustrations by leaking stuff to the media and getting really defensive about an HBO movie about their team. Weird. And Dallas got suddenly very defensive. Jerry Jones with a smile on his face. The billionaire from Texas got very defensive last night when asked about drafting a guard, Tyler Smith, who people had concerns over. Let me put it like this. We have both of them. This was printed three days ago below him. Both of those players are below him. Can you see that? <laughs> Don't show him that. I'm not going to show him that. <laughs> not are, you that. I, are you serious? There's, I'm dead serious. Okay. I'm dead serious. No, we really did have them rated below him. No, we ah. really did. Both of them. I probably wouldn't have shown everybody my draft board. Little odd. Like the Lakers getting worked up over an HBO show. Little odd. Um, Jerry also loved Jalen Smith's contract. The linebacker, he's no longer on a team. He loved Zeke's contract. He's a current albatross. He loved Dak's contract, which, by the way, is a $49 million cap hit next year. He likes a lot of things. He also defended keeping Mike McCarthy, although that draw that ran out the clock was really, really bad. Listen, Dallas lost Amari Cooper. A thousand yard receiver. There is absolute data to suggest Dak's not as good without Amari. And for letting go of him, they got a fifth round pick. They got fleeced. Look what Kansas City got for their receiver. So the Lakers and the Cowboys, they got too many f- friends and family. It's like high school wrestling matches. The only people that go are girlfriends and family. You ever seen that? That's what the Cowboys and the Lakers have. Too much friends and family. Running, not enough outside perspective. And the Cowboys are all run with the Jones family. I don't have a problem with them having the final say. I'd like other voices in the room, more eyes and ears from somebody else. Lakers, same thing. Friends and family of the organization. And both are getting very, very defensive. Listen, this is not deniable what I'm about to say. A lot of production left the Cowboys this offseason. Amari Cooper is 1,000 yards, one of the best route runners in the league. Randy Gregory is inconsistent, but when he's on, he is a handful to block. Cedric Wilson's one of the more interesting number three wide receivers in the NFL. They're starting right tackle, Lyle Collins, and Connor Williams, who's not great, okay, but he played a lot in the offensive line. And in return, after losing all that production, they got a guard from Tulsa, who may be great, But I watched all the draft stuff last night, and he is considered to be a little bit of a project. You know, they always say if you if you want to lose weight, you got to more calories. The calories have to come down, and then then the exercise has to go up, right? It's the same with saving money. You spend less, and you make more, right? Same in the NFL. You lose a ton of production, and you don't bring any in. It's a problem. It's not terribly complicated. Is that they, I mean, Randy Gregory, Amari Cooper, Cedric Wilson, Lyle Collins. And this is an organization where you fans don't love the coach. (laughs) You don't. (laughs) We know close games, Mike McCarthy, it is nail biting time. We don't feel that way in the NFC with Matt LaFleur or Sean McVay or Kyle Shanahan. We feel that way with Mike McCarthy. So uh, uh, these big brands, they do get talked about a lot when they're not relevant. I get it. Your complaints are heard and understood, but we also, this is who they are, but and they also get these big franchises when they're struggling. They get whacked a little bit more and talked about. Lakers, Cowboys, both feel to me like uh, deep down they know. Hadn't been a good last 12 months. They, they both know it. Just getting a little, getting a little odd in defending it. Um, New York teams had a good night, or did they? 
Chris Paul was amazing. I love Chris Paul. I really do. I heard line news. Well, the number one overall pick last night was Trayvon Walker. And there were a couple questions about who the Jags would select with the first overall pick. And Doug Peterson was asked how they decided to go with Trayvon Walker. There was a lot of pre-draft speculation that, that you, uh, that you Trent, favored Tra- Trayvon and that you, Doug, favored the offensive lineman, Iquanu. Could you talk a little bit about how you arrived at this decision? I mean, did you guys actually have some disagreement about this? Can I, can I just stop you? Yeah. There was, there was never, this thing was never split. Okay, I'm not saying, so I'm I'm just, not saying it was. I'm just n- saying that. I know it's out there. I just want to just go out on record and say it was never that way. I don't know where that came from. There was also some talk, and we think we talked about it yesterday, that the owner was leaning towards Hutchinson and that Balky wanted Walker. But I also think there's there's conversations that go on and people, you know, are going to fight for the guy that they think should be the pick. And that's the coach is going to have their opinion and the GM is going to have their opinion. And I'm sure the owner has their opinion and whoever makes the final say or you guys come to an agreement. So I can see these things leaking out. There was not a standalone consensus number one pick in the way that it was Joe Burrow or we right. had in, in, in past drafts. I mean, so I could see Georgia this being a conversation. Had, Georgia had five defensive players taken. Yeah, so, Georgia had a nice draft. <laughs> so, I mean, first of all, we said last year, we thought the Georgia defense was as good as any defense you and I had ever seen and were college football fans. Yes. I mean, it was as good as any save they in defense. They were visibly better than everyone. Significantly faster than any college team I'd seen. They had five guys drafted last night, all on defense. And my takeaway is, is he great? Was a supporting cast great? You can do worse things than drafting Georgia guys. I'll give you an example. Last year, the Packers, I think it was last year, took a Stokes, the corner from Georgia. And it got a lot of a lot of pushback. And I watched him. And I was like, uh, I don't know. That guy looks like potentially amazing. Georgia's had a reputation forever. There's been a reputation in the NFL forever that – Draft Georgia guys and figure it out later. It's like LSU and Georgia. Yes. Yeah. They may not win the national titles like Bama, but Georgia and LSU on any given year have better players than Alabama. They haven't always had the best coach. They've had less coaching stability. And that really matters in college football. But Georgia and LSU are often, even in Nick Saban's run here, have as good or better players. So like, I, I'm never going to lose a ton of sleep on drafting a Georgia guy first, although wouldn't have been my pick. But I get it. Yeah, I mean, it's not an outrage. No one saw that and was outraged by it and thought this was a huge swing. Like, you can have your opinion about each guy and everyone has their evaluations and who knows how it's going to work out. Generally, if you're picking at the top of the draft, it's because you're not a good team. And sometimes that factors into how players' careers end up stacking up over the first few years in the league also. Aiden Hutchinson went second. He was rumored to possibly go there um, first. Walker was reportedly in a serious car accident two weeks ago as well, but he suffered no injuries, thank God. He looked good on the couch. I mean, he looked like he was fine, right? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, look, I'm I'm very excited for Jacksonville this year, which is a very rare thing, but I think we got we got sort of robbed of Trevor Lawrence last year. Like, we didn't talk about him at all. It was all just chaos down there and drama. So I'm giving him a pass on his first year. And I'm, I'm excited to see what the pieces that they've brought in and now that what they'll do with the rest of this draft to see how Doug Peterson puts everything together down there and see if they can turn that around. Because I, I, I do want to see Trevor Lawrence have success. He was such an exciting player in college. I want to see him have some success in the NFL, and he's going to need to start with a culture build in Jacksonville. Yeah. So, USC, Drake London, number eight overall pick to the Falcons last night. He was the first wide receiver taken off the board. Had an ankle fracture, but that didn't stop him from being selected in the top ten. He was the highest drafted wide out by Atlanta since Julio Jones in 2011. Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year last season. Obviously, the wide receiver position has become a... has become a very marquee position, a lot drafted last night, and the Falcons had the worst-ranked wide receiver core entering the draft, so this was obviously a position of need for them, and they have Kyle Pitts that can line up opposite London. I thought this was a great pick for Atlanta, the right choice. Yeah, and we talked about this yesterday. I thought Seattle, Carolina, and Atlanta could have all drafted a quarterback, and instead with their first picks, they said, listen, we're going to set it up for next. Now, now they may all go get a quarterback in the second round. But what they said is, we're not going to reach. Right. When we go draft a quarterback next year, we, we, we want to get a little more solid. So Carolina's like, we're going to go get this. And Atlanta's like, we're going to get a, a star receiver. And Carolina's like, we're going to get an offensive lineman. And I think that was the right call. I mean, it looks like 
NFL GMs didn't love either quarterback. Right. I mean, that's it's pretty clear. And by the way, I saw the mock draft for today, and the rest of the quarterbacks all go today, and all go, Joy, in the top 15, 20 picks. So they don't exactly go to the better teams. Which is scary. Yeah, yeah that's right. So less talented quarterbacks to more chaotic teams. So I think Kenny Pickett got really lucky. I think, yes, absolutely. And, and look, for, for all the critics of like Kenny Pickett's hands and all that, he played at Pitt. University of Pittsburgh is located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> it's cold there. You know where they play their home games? Heinz Field, yeah. where the Steelers play. Yeah. There's not a huge adjustment there. <laughs> He's going to move apartments to a nicer one. Yeah. That's the move. It's so, what, like, what are you guys talking about? Like a cold weather team. He played in Pittsburgh. I, four, by the way, it was a four-year. I think he was a four-year starter. He put up numbers for three years, but I think he's he, he's literally he's old. He's twenty-four-year-old kid. Yeah, he went where he went in the draft for a reason. Like he's yeah. flawed as as all of these quarterbacks are. That's why the draft went the way it did. Yeah. But that is. 